Hiya, welcome back to my Cotswolds in a camper van adventure. In my last video, I spent the day at a busy Burford and one night at Wisdom Touring Park. In a pretty and peaceful location and only five minutes walk from the town centre, this one ticked all the boxes for me. And I made another new friend. Next day after a leisurely breakfast and a tweak of the awning, I left Burford, but not before calling in at the local smokery and farm shop for a few cheeky treats, as you do. Goodies. Now it was destination Bybury, and I was excited. Onward! I was immediately blown away by this charming little village and to reach the campsite I was staying at I had the pleasure of driving through the centre of it. In three quarters of a mile turn right onto the pike. According to Google, the site is just under a mile from the centre of Bybury. This is the entrance to the campsite, but in our excitement both me and the sat-nav missed it. Destination is on your left. Bybury Camping. Is it though? Arrived. Have I though? Where do I go? I maybe should have read my email before I arrived. One little phone call later. Okay, I've come too far down the drive. It was the first gate, so as you come into the entrance, it's the gate on your left. So, back up the drive I go. Backwards! Well, you wouldn't want to meet anybody coming down here.
I joined the Greener Camping Club to stay at this site. It's a £12 a year membership fee and they promote sustainability. In my opinion, it was well worth it. Pitch where you like. Typically, I headed for the far end of the field. started setting up while I waited for the owners to meet me. And it had got to brew time o'clock. So the owners said part where you want and we'll see you when we get here. So they'll probably be here in about 10 minutes. I just want to make sure I'm parked all right. Um, before I put the windscreen cover on. So if I am parked all right, I've got a corner spot away from everyone, a table and a campfire circle, stone circle. So I can have a little campfire tonight and I've got a new outside light as well. So that should light the place up. I'm just trying to time when to go into Bybury because it's absolutely heaving at the moment. It's only a little couple of streets. So I'm thinking I might let the afternoon, most of the afternoon pass, just chilling out on, on my pitch. Um, and then head down late afternoon and see it into the evening when uh, it'll still be light but hopefully be quieter. If I can't get any good sort of shots, I'll get up really early in the morning because it's only about a couple of minutes on the bike and I'll get down then for uh, like about 6am or something <laughs> when most normal people will be in bed maybe 5am we'll see I don't know how busy it's going to get here today because sometimes you think oh it's quite quiet and then you go out for the day and you come back and it's it's full so I don't know, I'll ask when uh, when they get here, I'll see how busy they're likely to be and, and like I say, just check that I'm okay parked up here. It's a little campfire, Yee, not done that for a while. You really can't beat the simple things in life. Well, as things stand, it's looking like an incredible pitch. It's just, the campsite's basically just a field where little sections have been cut to park up at, but a really wild feel to it. There are toilets and showers. They're in a horse box at the entrance. So I'll show those when I head out on the bike. I've met the owners, they're lovely. I can't remember the names. You know how you speak to somebody and you're not always listening to it's terrible though, isn't it? So I think I'm going to enjoy the site for uh, my little pitch for an hour or so because the owner said I'm probably best heading into Bybury about 4pm 4, 4 when things quieten down a bit because driving through as you could see it, it's, it's chocker really, it's school holidays so it's to be expected so I'll probably pop down like I say about 4 p.m. maybe grab some food there although I'm tempted to spend come back to my pitch and maybe cook what have I got oh I've got I've got some cold meats I've got some olives I've got some biscuits cheese wine I might have that later see how I feel because I have fairly eaten and eaten well let's say the last couple of days but I'm on my holidays, so it's allowed, isn't it? I feel so chilled. I think I'm even better than I used to be at switching off. I've always been quite good at it. But when you're, when you're in these surroundings, Ever the pro distracted by a fly. 
That's impossible. Testing, testing, one, two. I'll tell you one thing I've noticed since I've been down here. Campsites, they're not very expensive compared to some prices I've paid, especially compared to club prices, caravan club and camping in caravan club. And you get all this. £20 a night for this. There's no electric, but you've everything else. So one night off grid, it's no, no biggie. Even for me, I think I need a new battery. I'm probably going to go lithium. I'm still working on that, whether to get lithium battery or solar. But I think for the amount of, for the length of time I can get away in the van, I don't think I need both. I think a lithium battery will be enough for me. It's not like I'm getting away for weeks and weeks. You know, the most I'm getting away for at the moment is a week. Maybe two at a push. So yeah, I think a lithium battery might be the way to go. God, my van looks sexy, look at this. And the sun's joining us now. to heaven here it's bliss I'm not gonna go on but I've realized the nicer the place the more you know the more beautiful the place that I find myself that's when I'm missing more that's when I'm missing the most because he should be sharing in this he'd love it here he'd absolutely love it I mean, what's not to love? Absolute peace. And that's when I get a bit sinky. I'm happy, I'm happy to be here doing this. But there's that, that shade over it. But I can hear him, get on with it, enjoy it. I might stay on the pitch today, I might stay here, get a fire going later, have some food in the van, sit out, because the sun's finally out, we've had two days of not great weather, but the sun's back, and because it was so busy in Bybury earlier, my plan is, plan is, get up really early, because, oh, I wonder what time you can move off here though. I'll check that. But get up early, get into Barbary and park up the van. So leave leave my pitch because I'm only here for one night. Park up in the van and explore it then when it should be quiet before I move on to Borton on the water and try and get a full morning of things in tomorrow. But yeah, maybe just um, a van day today. Okay, the shorts are on, t-shirts on, music's on, very low, beer's popped open, don't know how that happened, and uh, flies again, that's me for the afternoon, it's official, I'm going nowhere.
so I've changed my mind. I've decided to have a walk, uh, a cycle down into Bybury. Should be quiet now. And then I'll have to remember to get back before it's pitch black because <laughs> I'm right at the back of the field. That's me there. And my nearest neighbours are over there. And the gate's right down there. But this time I've got an outside light. It reminds me of when I was at Lydia. I pitched up right at the far corner of the field and then remembered, well, oh, actually, it's going to be pitch black there. And it was right next to a graveyard too. <laughs> oh, dead quiet. These are the facilities in the horse box. Very quirky. Toilets. Sink. Here's the rock. Shower. It's very clean. Put the rock back. Washing up sink. And I don't know what's in there. That's locked. And bins at the entrance gate. And that's it. So it's everything you need. From here there's a lovely little walk around the Rack Isle. It's a piece of wet grassland between the river and Arlington Row. Arlington Row is probably one of the most famous scenes from the Cotswolds. A row of old cottages. It was still really busy yet though, so I was determined to be patient and wait it out and hopefully get a real feel for this place once the crowds had gone. I can't believe I nearly stayed on site tonight. It's gorgeous here. I really was seeing Bybury in the most beautiful weather. The water was crystal clear and the fish had nowhere to hide. They're all jumping for the flies now. Feeding frenzy. I want to come back as a Bybury duck. No sooner had I said that though, than things got fruity. Quite randy here, the ducks. It was as dreamy as I'd imagined it to be.
What a stunning place and what a lovely afternoon, but it was time to think about getting back to camp. time in, in Bybury. I'm glad I went down tonight. Now the chap said oh you can have campfires no problem there's rocks like that circular one there and they're all around the field but I didn't feel confident enough putting it in there so I've I've got my little fire pit out and I have water at the ready in case. But it's burning nicely and very nicely. So I'm not mega hungry, I wasn't sure what to eat but at the farm shop earlier I picked up a few goodies and there's these like little meze things carrot, cumin I think it'll suffice Hey, look what I've got a new outdoor light There's something like three different settings and it's magnetic and it can change angles and I got that idea from Pawson Adventuring she's got one on her van and I thought that's exactly what I need that so I got one and it's the first time using it I might look at getting some lights fitted so maybe on the front and the back to operate from inside you know, if you're wild camping and, I don't know, you hear something or you want some light on, but you don't want to get out. Do they do things like that? It's freezing now, I'm ready to go in. I'm ready to go in. And that was it. Time for a brew, then bed. At the end of a brilliant day. Join me next time when I leave the campsite for a breakfast at the Trout Farm. And before leaving the village, I visit St Mary's Church and meet Angus, before visiting ancient stones en route to the next campsite. In Borton on the Water. <laughs>